Is the Holy Spirit God, meaning a person too? In this video, we're going to discover what the Bible says about this subject. If you've not subscribed yet to our channel, then please click on the subscribe button, on the bell and on all, and you receive the notifications when we upload new videos. As I've said, in this video, we are going to study the Holy Spirit. Is He a person and is He God? We're going to look at some basic texts to confirm what the Bible says about the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Anti-Trinitarians today claim that the Holy Spirit is the power of God, meaning He's a force and not a personal being. He's the Spirit of God coming to us. But is that what the Bible says? Does the Bible say that the Holy Spirit is a person? We're going to look at a few facts about the Holy Spirit. Fact number one, does the Holy Spirit have feelings? Because a spirit cannot have feelings, but a personal being can. Isaiah 63 verse 10, But they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit, so He turned Himself against them as an enemy, and He fought against them. So Isaiah says they grieved the Holy Spirit right here in the Old Testament, and the New Testament concurs in Ephesians 4 verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed to the day of redemption. This word grieve means a feeling of intense sorrow or cause great distress to someone. You cannot be just a spirit, an unconscious uh, force, and yet have feelings. The Holy Spirit can be grieved, meaning he has feelings, meaning he is a person, a personal being. And it's not too hard to understand. Yes, we do not understand all the details. We don't, and we probably will never on this earth. We only have that which the Bible reveals. But at the same time, the Bible also says God is a spirit, according to the Gospel of John. And according to the New Testament, Jesus became a quickening spirit. So Jesus became a quickening spirit, yet he is a person. The Father is called a spirit, yet he is a person. The Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit. And then people say, you see, he's only a spirit. He cannot be a person. But how can we apply that rule to the Father and the Son and not to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is also a person according to the Bible. What we need to understand, the Holy Spirit is as much a person as God is a person. Fact number two, Jesus said he would send us another comforter, meaning he will send us someone like himself. Let's read John 14, 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The word here in the Greek for another is alos, which means someone of the same kind. Therefore Jesus sent a person of the same kind. Well, Jesus is God in the fullest sense. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can click on the card in the upper right corner where I explain that Jesus is fully God, just like the Father is God. The Holy Spirit is like Jesus. Jesus will send another comforter, someone different from him, yet the same in the kind, in who he is. That means Jesus will send someone like himself, God. And that would be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is a person. God comprises out of three persons right in the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God, the word in the Hebrew there is Elohim, and the I am at the end means plurality, meaning God is more than one. God says it in the first verse of the Bible. And then in the first chapter of the Bible, he concurs in Genesis 1.26 when he said, Let us make man in our image. God is saying right there in the first chapter of the Bible, I'm more than one. Three persons in the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three persons, all three God. Christ gave to this world his representative. The third person of the Godhead. They are three persons in the heavenly trio, my friends. And in the name of these three great powers, people get baptized and we live this Christian life. The Bible also teaches 
by studying Matthew chapter 12 that the Holy Spirit is divine. He is a divine teacher. Matthew chapter 12, 31 and 32. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. You can only blaspheme something because of divinity. So the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed because he is divine. He is a person. He is one of the persons of the Godhead. Now Jesus said, if we blaspheme him, it will not be forgiven us. What is blasphemy? Well, it's to claim to forgive sins, number one. And number two, it is to say that you are God. They claimed Jesus, when Jesus said that, they wanted to stone him, saying, that is blasphemy. How can a man claim to be God? So when you claim that you are God, that is blasphemy. Now the opposite is happening with the Holy Spirit in anti-Trinitarianism. they saying he is not God. They are removing him from his position. Therefore, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. The next fact, the Holy Spirit can be lied to. Acts chapter 5, 3 and 4. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So in Acts it says they've lied to the Holy Spirit and then it concludes to say exactly what it means they have lied to God. The Holy Spirit is also God. He's the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit can also direct and speak according to Acts 13 verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Separate them to me for the work that I have called them. Now it makes sense exactly why Jesus uses the, the word He when He referred to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit said, separate them to me and I will direct them. The Holy Spirit is the representative of Christ that came to, comp to continue the work that Jesus did upon the earth. This is the dispensation of the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts through the direction of Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. For the Holy Spirit only says and does that which Christ directs Him to do. Just like Jesus only did what the Father told Him to do while on the earth. Now the third person of the Godhead is the one that does that. There are three eternal dignitaries in heaven. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. There is the eternal Godhead the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. They are three eternal beings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is no question when we study the Bible that the Holy Spirit is both a person and God. Let's not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Let's not demote Him from who He is. It's a dangerous thing to do. Do we understand fully the Holy Spirit? No. And in that sense, we need to be silent. But what we do gather for the Bible is enough evidence as to his position in the kingdom. May God bless you as you've listened to the study. If you've learned something, then please leave a comment below. If you've not subscribed yet, subscribe to our channel. If you want to donate to this ministry, you're welcome to do so as we are self-supporting ministry. Until we meet again next time, God bless you.